episode, or another video I guess, I don't know why I'm calling them episodes, another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the NMD R2. This one, white stripes along here, I guess uh, the white diagonal lines on this side on the outer half with black behind it and it has the black stripes on the inside of the shoe, almost like a, well not really black but a charcoal grey, dark grey kind of shade. This is a PK NMD, so it is prime knit. I wasn't sure at first, uh, but then I looked at the box and the box does in fact say PK. Wasn't sure because it doesn't have the traditional PK collar like the NMD R1s. So this video, we're gonna take a look at this shoe, plus we're gonna take a look at some of the differences between this shoe, the NMD R2, and an NMD R1. <laughs> differences that you'll notice is the lack of the EVA plugs. So it's on the R2 they have the big plug right here. This one is red and that is the only plug on the entire shoe. If you look this side it has the cutouts in the boost where the old plug used to be. So if we take a look at an NMD R1 this is the Champs exclusive. It has the two plugs on the outer and one plug on the inside. Some of the other differences is that on the R2, especially this one on this colorway, it has a tongue. This is new for NMDs. If you look at the difference, R1, no tongue. R2 has a tongue makes this shoe extremely easy to get on. Another one of the differences is the change in the look of the boost. I'll do a close up for you, but the boost on this one is closer to the boost that they have on the EQT 9317 support now. It's like a fish scale boost, whereas in the R1s, sorry, it's really windy outside. On the R1s, it's just the pellets, but on the R2s, it's an actual, it's a smoother, almost like a fish scale design. So I'll make sure I get a video of that, zoom in on that a bit. Still has the nipples on the boost. These ones have three all along the back, which is, yeah, the same as the R1s. Another one of the differences, look at the depth of the boost. So if you look at the back, the boost on the R2s is much thicker. I guess I shouldn't say much, but it is significantly, it is significantly thicker. Makes it a little more comfortable. Um, still not as comfortable as the Ultra Boosts. I don't understand why they can't seem to do that, why they can't seem to get the NMDs as comfortable as the Ultra Boosts, but it is what it is. Uh, still a very comfortable shoe. Another thing, look at the back heel tab here on this R2. Nice uh, faux leather right here, as well as the tongue has the faux leather Adidas hit here. Um, 
that is a little more similar to the XR1s. Many of the XR1s have this leather tab here on the hip, or on the, sorry, I should say the tongue. Um, whereas on the R1s, it was just a sewed on patch. Uh, on this one in particular, it is a 3M piece of material. Another one of the differences, I'll try to show it on video, but the lines on the bottom of the boost, um, if you guys have ever looked at the bottom of the boost on an NMD before, you'll notice there's little circles with lines on it. On these ones in particular, I'll try and get it in here, there is a bunch going right down the middle, down here, as well as down here. Um, trying to think of some of the other differences. This one in particular has a nice, it's almost like a suede, suede insole. Similar material to the R1s, but on this one, I know it's hard to see just from here. I'll make sure I zoom in on it a bit, but it's, uh, it's a nice contrast with the tan. I really like it. As well, a little bit more on the boost here. The boost on the R2s looks like it's milled. If you guys have ever seen CNC machining before, uh, where it's cutting out metal uh, with a blade or whatever, it's very defined and nice cut edges. I'm noticing that is the same on the R2s. The edge of the boost on the R1s kind of just falls off the back or off the sides, kind of rounded. Whereas on the R2s, it goes outside the shoe a little bit and then cuts. I really like it. It's a very subtle but nice touch. All right, overall, the NMD R2 black and white colorway, very nice shoe. I lucked out at a footlocker that doesn't usually get NMD releases. Uh, yesterday, I went in after work to check to see if they had any left and they had two pairs left one of them being a size 11, which is my size. So that was pretty cool, I lucked out. There is a lot going on with this shoe, with the different colors, uh, with the dark, the white, the red, the tan on the inside. Not a huge fan of this particular colorway. I would have preferred just the black or just the white of the R2s, but I'm not complaining. It is a really nice shoe, it's different and definitely one that I'm gonna be wearing this summer. I'll make sure to do an on feet of it. And also you might notice on the on feet, one thing that I don't like is right here on the inside of my left shoe, the prime knit kind of buckles. It kind of folds over itself, which feels a little weird. I'm not sure if there's a way to rectify that or if it's the way my foot is in there or I've made the fabric, the prime knit was a little bit too long or something like that. It just kind of feels weird the way it overlaps. Maybe you'll see it in the on foot. Overall, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you like it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and hopefully I'll be doing more videos. I also have a question for you guys that you can post in the comments. What kind of sneakers do you guys wear to parties or clubs? I'm going to a social tonight. Um, in Manitoba, we have socials or big parties for people who are getting married where they rent out like a banquet hall and there's DJs and prize and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know which shoes to wear. Drinks are always being spilled. I always make sure I get on the dance floor um, and things get messy on the dance floor and I hate to ruin a pair of shoes. I crep protect all my shoes. But what do you guys wear? Do you wear old sneakers, new sneakers? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much.